As someone who has lived on both sides of the spectrum, I want to believe that I am in the right position to make this sort of comparison. Mind you guys, this comparison is only based on my own personal experience. Disclaimer, my personal experience. This is what applies to me and this is what I have been able to gather from my, you know, few years here and there. By here and there, I mean living in London and outside London. hey guys welcome or welcome back to my channel if you're new here hi my name is betty and you're absolutely welcome to today's video if you're a returning subscriber you already know the drill thank you for coming back to watch my videos i really do appreciate you guys a lot as you can already tell from the title in today's video we're going to be discussing the differences between living in london and outside london based on my own personal experience as a matter of fact i lived in oxford oxfordshire which in particular the city was wanted for a little over two years and i have been in london for one year exactly one year guys by the time this video is out it's exactly one year i have been living in london i'm just going to be you know telling you guys what i have seen to be different so far um based on my time in london and outside of london so the first difference which i feel like everyone is definitely going to talk about whether you like it or not this one is a standby if you've lived both in london and outside of london i feel like this is one thing that you're definitely going to compare and that is the rent alongside other bills um when i was living in oxford oxford share that's a county in oxford by the way so when i was living there first year my rent was about 750 pounds per month which was not inclusive of bills and so tax, water bill electricity bill i wasn't paying for broadband at the time second year um, because i was living with someone my rent came down to about 475 pounds or thereabouts and bills was about 150 pounds or 250 pounds depending on the month so in total my bill then was about 600 pounds um and we were living in a two-bedroom flat at the time but when i moved to london guys because i love my own space i'm not really a fan of living in a shared accommodation just because i love my peace and because of you know things that i've had and i'm not somebody that um would be able to complain if i don't really like something so yeah just for my own sake i decided to take up a studio and we all know that studios in London are not the cheapest. Currently, my bills goes up to over a little over a thousand. Not a little, honestly, but yeah, it's a bit over a thousand pounds, which is like a big difference compared to what I was paying in Oxford. That was a very big shift for me, and I was not really happy about that. To be honest, I kind of regretted it at some point. I'm like why did i even move to this london like what what exactly is going on in this city but anyways um i am up here now and i just really like that i have left that part of my life and i have moved on from you know that area of my life so the second thing i'm going to be discussing is the salary differences oh i feel like a lot of people want to hear about this um because of this notion that we have that oh when you move to london your salary is a bit higher than when you're not living in london if you're living in london you get this london rate or whatever it is guys let me tell you the truth from my own experience so the salary difference was one thing that really eats me hard because i did not expect it everything that we've been hearing is like oh when you move to london the salary is going to increase you're going to get this london rate or whatever they call it but trust me my salary when i was living in oxford share was higher than when i moved to london now it's different i'm grateful to god for that when i first moved to london my salary decreased okay now so when I was in Oxford, I was with the same employer that brought me to the UK. And when I moved to London, when I firstly moved to London, I transferred. So it was still the same employer, but I just transferred workplaces. So you would expect that my salary would increase, but honestly, the salary reduced. It reduced by like two pounds or like one pound fifty or thereabout. But trust me, 
one pound fifty is money when you calculate that money over the number of hours you work in a week it's honestly accounts to something so i was not really happy about that to be honest but i just felt like over time it's going to get it can only get better that's just that's just the interesting part of it i'm not going to be stuck in one place for the rest of my life so i felt like it's just one of those things that i needed to compromise on at that point in time and i'm happy that i did at the time where i was working we were short staffed so there was no way that i would not get extra shifts even if i wanted to i would at least do like one or two extra shifts in a month but here i was not even getting extra shifts i was not getting my contracted hours so it was just a lot so don't have that notion that if you're not living in london your salary is definitely lower like way way lower than those people living in london trust me everywhere is not like that i'm not saying that some companies are not different but that was just the way it was in my own case some other companies would definitely offer this london rate or whatever they call it and they would give more enhancements for the fact that you're living in london transport and all of that so the third thing i'm going to talk about is proximity to african groceries if you're african you know how important this is like no cap we need to get our own food items as much as you know we want to eat intercontinental dishes and whatnot still miss our local dishes and you definitely want to live somewhere that you can easily get these items they are easily accessible to you when i was living in oxford oxford chair trust me i would take a bus of 45 minutes or 50 minutes or sometimes an hour depending on the route to get to the african shop to get what i need and it's just always so annoying because these buses don't even like come like every two minutes or every two minutes no like they don't even come as early as like every 10 minutes sometimes you have to wait for the buses like 35 minutes 40 minutes but anyways that aside so i wasn't like very very close to an african store and another thing is that in that area um the closest store trust me the closest stop was waitress and if you live in the uk you know how expensive things are majority of the things in waitress are it was just crazy because i was spending more on groceries i was spending more money to you know purchase my african stuff everything that i need i was spending more money on transport it was it was just genuinely crazy there we had waitress and sainsbury's if i can remember correctly if you have to go to tesco so you have to take a bus of like 30 minutes to get to tesco express so my only option was definitely sainsbury's and trust me i have had no choice sometimes than to shop in waitress because waitress was even the closest to my house but in london i feel like there is uh, this community of you know africans like it's just difficult for you not to find a community like that there are all these stores in close proximity to me which you know saves me cost in some way because i don't have to spend so much money on grocery that reminds me guys i can remember there was a time i wanted to buy yam <laughs> in oxford because i was craving yam was like luxury when i was living in oxford to be honest i wanted to buy yam on this particular day and i got to the store I took one tuba of yam and then I think they were, you know, selling the yam package or something like that. So I took one tuba of yam and took it and took it to the counter to be, you know, weighed. And tell me why this man told me that one tuba of yam costs eight pounds. And I'm like, excuse me, just one tuba of yam, eight pounds. Honestly speaking, I returned the yam. My craving immediately vanished because how can I feel? eight pounds for one bar of yam mind you i just came from nigeria like maybe i was already six months or there about but you know the nigerian in me i was still changing the currency like hold on eight pounds that's like at the time the, the exchange rate was still like 500 pounds there about so i'm like why would i be buying just one bar of yam for like four thousand five thousand naira? possible so i returned the yam i said i'm sorry i'm not buying but now I can get a two bar of yam for literally two pound, two pound fifty, depending on the size, yeah. But a two bar of at least I will still have the taste of yam. I bought a two bar of yam for one pound ninety nine before in London. Although my salary was higher at the time, but I was spending more money on relevant things, on groceries, 
and other things another thing i'm going to talk about is transports honestly the transport system in london is amazing if you don't drive i feel like you can still live in london comfortably you can still get to your destination in time even if you miss one train do you guys understand what i'm trying to say so let's assume that from here from my house now i'm going to stratford i'm meant to get to stratford at 4 at 4 30 pm and i miss one train i honestly can still get to stratford at 4 30 pm if i check the map again the transport link is that good when i was in oxford oh jesus christ sometimes i would have to wait 40 minutes for the bus <laughs> you guys this is like literally crazy i would have to wait like 40 minutes for the bus to come sometimes buses get cancelled and you have to wait for literally over an hour just to get the bus is it that difficult so because these areas are not very populated i feel like they don't invest so much in their transportation which is why there's limited number of buses in these areas i can remember i was going for a shift for an agency shift at the time and um the shift was at gloucester and from oxford chair to gloucester was i think two hours or thereabouts believe me you believe you me <laughs> whichever one take it whichever one is correct accept it i had to i think it's believe you me so i had to leave for a shift that was starting at 7 30 p.m trust me i had to leave my house at 4 p.m and just so you know this was not somewhere that i could angrily book an uber to what am i even saying uber did not operate in that area it was local texas and just know this and no peace wherever uber don't operate or boat and it's only local taxis that operate just know that they are going to double the price for you so for somewhere that uber is normally going to charge like 15 pounds if you're taking a local taxi it's going to be like 30 pounds 35 pounds so it's not somewhere that i could is even say oh i'm angrily going to book taxi too so i just had to you know leave the house that early just to be able to catch up to meet um the start of the shift i just feel like if you're living in london the cost sort of balances itself out honestly speaking i i know that you definitely you're definitely going to be able to save a little bit more if you're living outside of london because of the rent prices but trust me if you're not living close to your workplace you're going to be spending more money on transport you're going to be spending more money on groceries because local or let's say african foods are definitely more expensive in these areas i feel like london is a central place where they transport these things to so generally i would say the african food items are generally cheaper in london if i am wrong please correct me so i believe that if you're somebody living in london and you're able to manage your expenses you're able to manage your income you would definitely do fine there are some places in london as well that you can get shared accommodation for cheaper prices i just feel like this is based on what you want to go for if you're going for a shared accommodation as well you can get it for cheaper but i just feel like the sizing is not what you're going to like um let's just be honest about that you would get like an accommodation of like 600 pounds but the room might not be more than this it would definitely be a box room but somewhere outside london you get you can get like a one bedroom flat for even 600 pounds so i believe that these things are based on their own cost and it's just an individual thing to sort of make a decision on where they want to stay don't um say because so so person is living in london and they are doing fine if you move to london you might not do fine that's just it and i feel like people just have this notion that you might not have money you might not have savings and all of that i feel like these things are based on personal experience i for one um i'm not one of these people that buy coffee i don't go to shops I mean once in a while if i want to have a taste of it that's not those are not the kind of things that i spend my money on so i would say it's still based on personal you know personal discipline i know people that live outside of london and they spend their money on coffee tea costa everything coffee every day you know if you're buying coffee every day you know how much that amounts to in a month and me that i'm not buying coffee every every day 
do you know how much i'm saving in a month so i would say it's still based on personal discipline as much as we have places that sell food in london i don't eat out a lot of times so i am still saving on that even if you're living outside of london and you're eating out every other day you know how much you're spending on that so i'll say it's a matter of discipline and how you're able to manage your expenses one more thing i would like to talk about is mental health if your mental health is important to you and you're living somewhere you're not comfortable with like me when i was living outside of london vamos leave because your mental health is very very important so let me just give you guys let me talk to you guys about this when i was living in vantage um i was with someone right um oxford oxfordshire vantage whichever one i was with someone and um i had no friends around my family was not around at the time i was the only african nurse person of color at my workplace so i mean i mean there were nice people there i made i made connections i met people but you know definitely if you want to feel more comfortable somewhere you would like somebody of your type you like somebody of your type to be there if you understand what i'm saying but yeah i definitely made met nice people at where i was working and i made connections and whatnot but i feel like it, it just wasn't doing it for me um the only thing my life was just a routine at the time even now my life is still a routine to be honest but now um i feel like i am in a more accepting community i'm closer to my friends um i'm closer to family and um yeah i mean it's just diff the vibe is just different to be honest i do miss my friend <laughs> in one stage place was like a village it was secluded um there was nothing around trust me nothing nothing i think the closest park to that place was like 30 minutes or 25 minutes or thereabout the only place that we used to go was like the town center and that was like on market day, market days <laughs> so it was it was just crazy my mental health was going down the drain i was not enjoying it i was not liking it so i decided to make the move and honestly i had it at the back of my mind that if london was not doing it for me i would just move somewhere else nobody was tying me down to london the uk is big enough for us to explore so if one part of the city is not doing it for you move somewhere else it's as simple as that Lastly, let's talk about the weather hmm. guys the weather is also different london is generally warmer because of the population it has um so i feel like you know there there are a lot of people and it's just generally warmer but you see down there it's not the north but it was colder the weather was not like generally we know uk weather is not that great but you know there was even a, a little bit worse because it would be freezing sometimes and i'm traveling from like there to london sometimes it would literally be freezing in oxfordshire and once i enter london it's just chilly like it's not entirely cold or you know it's not overly um unbearable you can still bear it so the weather is a little bit different as well and i think i prefer the london weather compared to that weather i've done a little bit of comparison of both parts of the country of both parts of england you know the difference is still there the differences are still clear as day and um trust me it's been one year in london and i have enjoyed my stay so far it's been an amazing journey it's been really nice to you know experience somewhere else in its glory even though i haven't really been going out in london to be honest i hope you guys have enjoyed the video so far um it was just a little bit of bounce and just here and there i hope you guys enjoyed it and you know yeah and just learned one or two from my experience as usual so um i think i'm just going to end the video here thank you for watching and if you haven't subscribed and you watched up to this point it'd be cool subscribe is free of charge down here here just tap on the subscribe icon and click on the bell notification beside so you get to know each time i upload a new video thank you for watching guys and i'll catch you in my next video bye guys